Welcome back to the channel. Yes, it's a double upload because we're on the way to 2,500 subscribers and Chelsea have a game against West Ham right round the corner. We're on the back of two London derbies heading into a third. And this one, arguably, I'm most nervous about. Arsenal, I was concerned because I didn't think we had it in us to beat them. Tottenham, I wasn't concerned at all. Water's wet. And honestly, West Ham, I'm worried about this one. We lost 3-1 to them earlier on in the season. I think West Ham are the type of side that Chelsea have struggled against, if we're being honest, this season. And, and they've looked good. And don't forget, West Ham have been playing European football. They've, look, we'll talk about them a little bit more later on. But there's every chance Chelsea could win this game. And let's talk about why, shall we? We're off the back of a good win against Spurs. Now, I don't think that's our best performance of the season by a long way. But what I will say is we executed a game plan fairly well. We executed our set pieces fantastically. And Tottenham, well, I think they down tools, to be completely honest with you. They didn't look like they were playing for their manager, whereas our Chelsea team did. And they looked like they understood what it means to play Chelsea, to play Tottenham playing for Chelsea, right? And and I like that that's been installed into this team because I was worried when everyone left and we brought in all these new players, would they get it? Well, yeah, look, we've done the double over Spurs in one of our worst ever seasons. And saying worst ever seasons, I woke up this morning and I checked the Premier League table and all of a sudden, the Premier League table kind of looks how it should, in my opinion. The top eight are arguably the best top eight teams in the league. They're the biggest teams in terms of name. It's just the order and whether or not you agree with it. And Chelsea are there. Over 50 points above West Ham. We're not looking at mid-table anymore. We firmly got our sights set on a conference league place. Now, I'm I'm interested for what that means for Chelsea if we manage to secure it. I know there's a real lot of work to go into the next four games if we're to manage that feat and get into European football. But look, Chelsea are a club that belong in Europe. We win European trophies. And to educate these players on what it means to be Chelsea in Europe, I think conference leagues are a really good idea. However... If the injuries carry on into next season, then I might be a little bit more worried. But we can we can cross that bridge when we come to it. First of all, we've got to try and do it. So against West Ham, I expect us to set up really similarly to what we've done in the last couple of weeks, mainly because of how limited we are due to injuries. But let's have a look at the squad, shall we? And what I think will potentially be the starting lineup against West Ham. So... Obviously, similar formation we've been playing. We've seen Kukurea obviously occupying that midfield kind of inverted role when we've been in possession. The only sort of question mark, I think, if you look here, is potentially Alfie Gilchrist at right back. Now, Alfie's been really sort of a cult figure for Chelsea this season as a youngster coming through who's all about Chelsea. It's what he fully believes in. But have I been that impressed? Well, I'll be honest, not really. I think he took his goal well in the other week and I saw a really nice performance there. Then I wasn't too sure um, in other games. And then actually, I think against Arsenal, we, he probably, we could say he struggled and looked a little bit out of place. But then against Spurs, I saw, albeit a, not a very good Tottenham side, I saw a much better performance for him. I saw the type of performance you get in a game like that where fight can ultimately be something that, and passion that carries you through that game. And Alfie has that in abundance. And he was really good last night. And, and you know what? With more minutes, you start to learn a little bit more about a player. And I, I like what I saw. And going into this game, I think he'd be okay. But there is now a call for Achimpong because he's come on and made his debut. He's looked fantastic for 12 minutes. And physically against a side like West Ham, He's definitely got the build for it. Alfie's about 5'10". Achimpong, well, he's a lot bigger than that, let me tell you. And he looked really good. He looks like he's kind of got that fight too, which fair play to anyone in the academy who's coaching these guys coming through because they understand what it is to be Chelsea. It's as simple as that. They've, they've got the message. So I don't mind these kids coming in and fighting and they're fighting for their place. And they know that with a manager like Pochettino, he would give them a chance. So 
there's potential that could happen. But honestly, if I'm if I'm really looking at this team, it would almost be a little bit harsh to drop Alfie. But rotation could happen because these games are close together. Now, looking at the rest of the team, there's not really much to say because we've got so many injuries. I know we've seen the likes of Nkunku return to training. We've seen the likes of Reese in training. They're not going to make the starting lineup. Let's be real. If they do, we're rushing them back. If they're on the bench, though, because the inexperience that we've had on it previously, I wouldn't be surprised. I would I would kind of expect them to be on the bench, even if they didn't play or they play very limited minutes. It wouldn't surprise me that they would be on the bench because they're not going to jump straight into the team. They're just not if we're being smart about injuries, even if we're chasing Europe. But my player to watch is Casado because I think since we've seen Enzo removed from the midfield, we have seen a complete change in Moises Casado. The player I've seen in recent weeks has been a little bit off it, not looking that good. But then since Enzo's been out of the team and he's been next to Conor Gallagher, I think he's looked really impressive. I definitely think he looks like a better player. I think Connor helps him out a lot more. I think Connor is actually more like Aaron Golo Kante. And Casado, well, he's starting to pick out some really nice passes. And I'm seeing a type of player there that I haven't seen all season. I'm seeing him link in play. I'm seeing him be dynamic. I'm seeing him be positive in terms of us trying to create chances. Passes in behind, crossfield switches, diags. Like it's. It's good from Casado. It really is. And I think that's happened because we've removed Enzo from the team and Casado's kind of understanding his role a little bit more and Connor's helping him to do that. And massive, massive thing to remember is Kukurea, when in possession, has been inverting the last couple of games and that's really helped us in possession too. So for me, I'm expecting Casado to be the player to watch against West Ham because I feel like if he has a good game, this Chelsea side could really make something happen. However, West Ham are no mugs. In a London derby, they're going to be up for it. Look, they are. And let's look at West Ham, shall we? Because their current form is one win in five. They've had a couple of draws, and you actually have to go all the way back to the beginning of March, bar their win against Wolves, to find another win. So they haven't been great. West Ham recently in the Premier League, even though I think they're off the back of a draw against Liverpool, who were, up until a couple of days ago or weeks ago, fighting for the Premier League title. And there's a couple of players that have absolutely set the Premier League alight for them. Look, we lost to them 3-1 earlier in the season, and people were just starting to get to know that this newly assembled sort of West Ham squad. But now, I think it's fair to say that two or three of these players are going to be moving on to much bigger sides come the summer. One of them being Mohamed Kudus, a player that was strongly linked with Chelsea in the summer, and we we didn't take the chance. Weirdly enough, we've taken the chance of a lot of players with less minutes and less experience and less evidence than Mohamed Kudus had for Ajax. And he's been exceptional for West Ham. He really, really has. And he's my player to watch for this game coming up. They've been in Europe. They actually managed to get a draw against the Leverkusen side. They have struggled in the Premier League, I think, because of what they were trying to do in Europe. And it's tough. We're not denying that. It looks like David Moyes is going to leave at the end of the season. But they're a good outfit. They really are. And they're going to be up for it. It looks like they're going to be playing a 4-2-3-1. And we know that Paqueta, when he can get on the ball in and around, I was going to say the penalty area, but even a little bit deeper now, he's really making West Ham tick. We know that Kudus is lightning in transition. And the one player that I haven't said would potentially start that could for them is James Ward-Prowse. Because I feel like from set pieces, that could be a real issue for Chelsea. If you look at their back line, Ogbonna, Zuma, massive. Suchek, massive. Antonio, a physical presence. Alvarez, he's a tall person as well, I I think. Maybe I'm wrong with that, but I'm sure he's fairly tall. Anyway, they've got big players and they could cause us an issue if James Ward-Prowse 
was to be in that team somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where. And we also know that Jared Bowen's been a real, real threat in front of goal this season. So they're going to be a difficult side to predict how they're going to play. Whether or not Chelsea can break them down, I'm not sure. They've got a couple of wise old heads in that team. Bonner now being 35 years old. Zuma knows Chelsea, doesn't he? He's obviously a player now who's really coming into his own. He's the, I think he's the captain of West Ham. It's going to be an interesting game, but we're at the bridge. And ultimately, our form at the bridge has been pretty good. I think Pochettino has understood the assignment that really we have to make this a fortress. And I'm expecting to see that going into this game again. And, and we've kept a couple of clean sheets now at the bridge against Everton and against Spurs. And I want to see that reiterated. That I think really that message has really been conveyed since we saw the return of Thiago Silva and Trevor Chalaber on just how important clean sheets are. Because what that does for a young side is not allow their heads to drop. You know, every time we've seen a goal go in this season, our heads drop a little bit. But ultimately, not conceding has really allowed these players to build and learn on how important it is to come together as a team, score goals, but also keep goals out of your own net. And we saw, like I said earlier about Madueki, he understood the fight that was required to help his defenders, as we're 2 new up now, keep a clean sheet. And, and I just love that, that the whole team's fighting for that because they now understand how important it is. Helps the goal difference, helps the mentality, turns the team into real winners because winning games with a clean sheet is the mark of real winners. Real, real winners that you can go and win a game and be solid defensively. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the mark of a Jose Mourinho team. That is uh, the school of Mourinho. Winning games with a clean sheet, comfortably seeing out a game defensively as well as offensively. And I like to see that. And I've questioned Pochettino at times because I felt like defensively, he may have made us worse this season. Well, let's hope that going into this game against West Ham, that's not the case. The The high line's not going to be there from West Ham. We know they're going to head every single ball, like we said before. They've got creativity and pace going forward. They're clinical at the moment in regards to a couple of players as well going forward. So realistically, how do I see Chelsea exploiting them? Well, I think, one, it's going to be a bit of magic. I don't see us being able to exploit set pieces like we did against Spurs. I would hope we can get the ball down and play. And if the game's open, then I back this Chelsea side. I've said that from the beginning of this season. If we can open the game up and they don't play this low block and sit back against us, I really back us. And we need Stamford Bridge to really get behind this team at the moment because if we've got any chance of making Europe, this is a really, really important game. So what I want you to do is let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think the score is going to be going into this game against West Ham? Like I said, I'm nervous, but if we apply ourselves well and there's a couple of good additions back on our bench, I think we're in an okay place to go and win this game against West Ham because their current form isn't unbelievable in the Premier League. It, it really isn't. You've got to go quite a way back to find their last win before their win against Wolves in their last five games. So look, let me know your thoughts. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. We're on the road to two and a half thousand subscribers, like I said. Like the video if you're enjoying the content. If we can get 25 likes on the video, I'd appreciate that so much. And I will see you more in the build-up towards this West Ham game and afterwards for all the post-match talk. I'll see you in a bit.